And now I'd like to introduce founder of the largest mixer, Dave Linden. Thank you very much. So I've been fortunate enough to been producing the largest mixer for the last 18 years, um, and we have done a total of 50 largest mixer events um, throughout Southern California and Las Vegas. So uh, with that kind of um, experience, I've been fortunate enough to see um, some of the best and uh, worst um, exhibitors and, and businesses uh, that, uh, well, we'll all be surprised with uh, the next couple of um, slides that we're going to see uh, and some of the mistakes, so we're all going to be able to uh, uh, glean some good information from um, people's mistakes. Uh, so um, with that said, here's some, uh, some good tips on maximizing your trade show experience. Um, first of all, and I think most importantly, uh, before the expo, um, is to do some, some pre-planning. Uh, and really, you can't wing it. Uh, those that do always end up... Um, having a, uh, an unfortunate experience and, and, unfor and, and in that case might not come back to the expo, which is not good for, um, let's just say if we're talking about the chamber expo, they might not come back to the chamber expo, uh, then they might not do shows um, in the future, um, and th then they're going to leave with a bad experience. Um, so with, with that said, um, certainly come up with some kind of strategy, um, you know, practice your opening lines, um, you know, how was your day? Uh, what brings you to the event, um, if, well, depending on what city you might be in, uh, let's just say if you're in Vegas, uh, hey, how about those Las Vegas 51s? Um, when I give this kind of presentation in Southern California, my line usually is, hey, how about those Dodgers? But it might not be too many Dodger fans listening here. Uh, but in any case, just, um, you know, something that is maybe something a little more conversational rather than um, business-like, um, you know, uh, maybe something more like, you know, uh, tell, tell me what, you know, kind of businesses you're looking for, uh, how can we help you, um, rather than just, you know, hey, here's our booth, let me tell you uh, all about me. Um, you know, certainly practice your elevator speech, um, you know, have a good, you know, 30, 40 seconds, um, and that way at least uh, you'll be a little bit more um, prepared. Um, you know, certainly, you know, Keep it simple. Um, whatever you uh, are going to prepare um, when you decide, you know, what your uh, goals for the day are going to be, um, and maybe keep it to just one thought that you want to get across. So, um, you know, may maybe there's something in the last, you know, couple of weeks in your own business that you're trying to um, achieve. So instead of trying to be everything to everyone, um, maybe just get one simple thought. Um, that, you know, or w w one simple goal that you're trying to um, bring in. So, for example, um, you know, we're producing our next largest mixer event in Los Angeles, and, you know, we're in the process of trying to get, you know, restaurants to sign up. Uh, obviously, we're interested in all businesses signing up, but specifically restaurants. So just in the last couple of weeks, when I meet people, uh, my main question for them is, hey, do you know any restaurant owners that might be interested in participating? So uh, maybe there's something with your business that you're specifically just trying to uh, achieve as far as um, rather than try to come up with 50 different um, goals, maybe just one. And then, you know, certainly speaking of goals, um, if you don't set up goals for yourself, you will definitely leave the event with uh, a not the best experience and you won't really feel that you're fulfilled. So it doesn't make a difference what your goals are. Obviously every business might be a little bit different, but you know, maybe it's to come home with 100 business cards or if you have an e-newsletter, maybe you want to sign up, you know, 25 people or um, you know, maybe it's just to, you know, find 10 good leads, but whatever it is, put a quantifiable number on it. So that way when you get back to the office, you can at least say, hey, we reached the goals and it was an, you know, it was, it was a good experience. Um, having some kind of show special is, you know, really, really important and something that uh, very rarely do I see when I go to business expos and it's usually just someone sitting behind the booth, uh, you know, passing out stuff, whatever that might be, and they don't really have some kind of bounce back offer. Um, so, you know, it could be a coupon, um, you know, it could be, 
you know, 25% off, I mean, you know, whatever it might be, uh, 10% off, I mean, if it's not necessarily applicable for your business to give a discount, um, you need to have something that you're going to distribute, um, you know, in some kind of flyer form or, you know, a little 5 by 7 postcard where people can at least um, take advantage of some kind of offer of you being at the event. So in the uh, trade show business, there's something called the show stopper. And uh, the show stopper is uh, maybe that one promo item that you might purchase that just makes people, well, stop at your booth and want to get one. And um, speaking of show stoppers, uh, a couple that I've seen that have been at our largest mixer events over the years um, that have just been really effective is uh, the money machine because, you know, everyone likes money. So if, uh, for those that are following along with the PowerPoint, um, you can see that T-Mobile here brought out their, um, their money machine and someone walks in and, and well, there's a little guy, uh, well, I say he's little, he kind of looks short, but in any case, um, <laughs> he's, he's shorter than the guy that's in the money machine. Uh, but, uh, there, you know, he's having a lot of fun on the microphone and, um, and just really bringing a lot of attention to his booth. Um, the, the next showstopper that was really, really impressive was from Roswell, New Mexico. Their business development department um, purchased these Frisbees that, you know, looked like spaceships. Um, and people were walking around the event saying, hey, where did you get that really cool Frisbee? Oh, it was over at the Roswell, New Mexico booth. So just something that might um, have something to do with your business, which is great. Um, and if, if it doesn't have anything to do with your business, that's fine too, but it's something that when people are walking around the event, um, they're like, hey, where did you, you know, where did, where did you get that? And, you know, it'll bring people to your, uh, to, to your booth. Um, as far as the pre-promotion of your participation, uh, you know, the best networking event you can attend is the one that you help promote. And um, not only will, um, and we'll use the Metro Chamber as an example, not only will they hug and kiss you the next time they see you when they see some kind of Facebook mention or a Z-blast, um, but uh, it really just lets your customers know that you're out in the community and, and doing things um, to, you know, help further your business, which will hopefully in turn, you know, further the business of all your clients. So. Um, you know, it's really easy nowadays to do this with, you know, if you have an, a database for e-blasts, uh, certainly, you know, social media is great. Um, and, you know, if you're exhibiting at the event, you know, tease your booth, um, hey, this is what's going to come up, um, you know, at the uh, Chamber Expo, and this is why you should visit our booth. Um, I wouldn't really be so concerned about, like, your booth number and making sure you get that because I don't think anyone is going to actually be running down, oh, i got to go visit booth, you know, 105. Um, but just knowing that you're going to be at the event um, and, hey, you know, when you come to our event or come to our booth, you know, uh, make sure to enter the drawing or, you know, whatever you might have at your booth. But, um, you know, certainly helping promote the event uh, is, is really crucial um, and just think if, if every exhibitor at the show was just responsible for, you know, bringing in two extra people that could easily equal, you know, an extra two to three hundred people. Um, and once again, the organization putting on the event um, will be will be very happy with you. Um, this is an example of uh, just a, a simple e-blast that this company sent out on uh, on behalf of uh, LA's largest mixer a few years back. And um, it doesn't have to be anything, you know that flashy, but it was just, hey, we're going we're gonna to be at this event and, you know, we think you should as well. Um, this was a little, uh, little shout-out that we did um, prior to our participation at Preview um, this past year. And, um, geez, we got 11, 12, 13 likes at that point. So, um, so that was kind of neat. And, um, and I, I believe the, the chamber was very happy with us for, uh, for, for promoting it. Um, so at this time, I'd like to throw out a little public service announcement, uh, having not much to do necessarily with uh, your trade show experience, but, um, but just a, a little pet peeve of mine um, that I actually recently saw and I thought I'd pass it along. Um, once again, for those that can see the PowerPoint, um, there is uh, something wrong with this person's uh, Twitter page, um, and it has to do with the date. 
of the last post. Um, this happens to be September 26, 2014. Uh, then the, there's this uh, company called Postal Annex, uh, happens to be a national company. I was shocked that their last post was in uh, 2012. And uh, moving along, um, Friendly Computers isn't exactly that friendly to their followers because their last post was in 2010, almost six years ago. So uh, the point being is keep up to date on your social media. If, if you haven't posted in a couple of years, maybe social media isn't for you and it might be time to um, close that Twitter account. Uh, what's really sad about those last three examples was that those were all people that actually on their website have links to their Twitter page. So there's nothing worse than seeing a, uh, a, a Twitter page or a Facebook page, and I'm sure we've all seen it, where someone hasn't posted in you know, a few years. And there's so many ways to schedule um, these social media posts if you don't want to do it every day. Uh, for those that are familiar with Hootsuite, um, that's a great free opportunity for people to just spend a couple of hours a month, maybe uh, even an hour, and just set up um, every day, set up you know 30 um, posts, and you're done for the month. So um, you know, for those that don't necessarily want to spend the time every single day thinking about it, there's definitely ways to do it so you don't have to necessarily do it on a daily basis. But once again. If you have a, a Twitter page or Facebook or Instagram and it's not updated um, in the last couple of years, definitely you're not doing yourself uh, a good service uh, by keeping it live. So during the expo itself, a um, couple of tips. First of all, no one likes to be sold at the event, whether or not you're exhibiting or even if you're attending, just the whole being sold concept. Um, is a little old, and unfortunately, I've noticed since um, you know since the recession, uh, it seems that everybody is under a lot of pressure to um, sell and see some kind of immediate return on investment. And this whole ROI, which is everyone likes to use that word now. Oh, I don't see the ROI, so I'm not going to exhibit. Uh, if you're exhibiting at a expo and you're looking for some kind of immediate return on investment, I guarantee you, you definitely will get let down. Um, participating at business expos or any kind of networking event, um, it's all about relationships and being seen and shaking hands and following up. It's not about getting that immediate return on investment. If you're looking for that, you can get a booth at a swap meet and you can sell um, your goods and then there you'll have buyers. Um, but doing it at a, at a business networking type event, um, return on investment is not necessarily the place to, to have it. Um, so keep in mind, just keep the kind of hard sell to a minimum um, and can concentrate more on relationships and, um, and, and follow up and you know, trying to get the most out of, out of your experience that way. Um, next is a, a little, uh, uh, we'll call it a little minor pet peeve of mine, um, only because we're so guilty of it, but um, as you can see, um, this individual uh, who incidentally happens to have a cell phone from 1998, because if you can see there's an antenna there, uh, that's just I used a photo from a while back, but this is a, this is a real photo <laughs> of, of, of someone who uh, is is doing something, and uh, and next is a, another photo of someone at their booth who uh, is doing something as well. Uh, he's smiling because um, he thinks I guess it's fun, uh, and then here's here's another one um, of someone at their booth. Uh, now, incidentally, I did not tell our photographer, please. Um, go around and take pictures of people at their booth on their cell phone um, because in six years I'll be sitting at the chamber office doing a presentation and I'm going to need some kind of photos. Um, but certainly if you are exhibiting, just stay off your cell phone and if you have to make a phone call, go ahead and uh, you know step out, um, go to the restroom, do whatever you need to do, but uh, there's nothing worse than um, 
and I'm sure we've all seen it. We walk up to someone's booth and they're just typing away on their phone or they're, or they're on the phone, you know, behind their booth. And here, you know, you spend five, six, maybe seven hundred dollars um, uh, on a booth. Uh, maybe you've sent some staff and, um, and you know, and they're on their phone and there's potential customers in front of you. So just be very, very cognizant um, of that. So um, I'm sure we've all heard of Match.com and um, we've heard of of eHarmony. Uh, maybe some of us have heard of Tinder. And there's also, for those that are of a certain religion, there's Christian singles, there's J dates. Um, so the bottom line is uh, don't be that guy. Uh, those were all dating services. Uh, networking events um, are not uh, singles events. And um, it's, it's really frustrating, and um, even in our own company, we have a, a company policy that, you know, we don't mix business with pleasure. Um, and it, it's really frustrating, unfortunately, and I don't know how many guys are actually on, the call, on, on this call versus, versus ladies, because usually it's, it's the guys that are, uh, that, that, that are uh, uh, guilty of this. Um, but, um, you know, unfortunately, um, when people use networking events, uh, business expos uh, as uh, dating services, um, it kind of gives the whole uh, organization and it gives the experience uh, uh, not not the great the greatest name. So uh, just be cognizant of you know keeping business business and keeping the social aspect of it. Um, a little bit separate from it. So, um, so enough said about that. Hopefully, you all um, get my point there. Um, this actually is not a real photo of of someone at a networking event. It's just a photo I found with someone with food in their teeth. Um, to prove the point, uh, to eat before you go to a networking event. Um, just a couple of months ago, I was at a mixer and. The food was amazing. I think it was like you know El Pollo Loco was was uh, was catering it. So I mean, it was a great spread. And there was this guy in a nice suit, a little older, but uh, he had a piece of rice on his chin. And it was you, no one was going to walk up to him and say, "Listen, um, you have rice on your chin," because that would have been embarrassing. Yet you know he was walking around the whole networking event with the rice on his chin. Um, Either if you are eating, um, you know, at the very least, maybe when you're done, go to the restroom and just check your face, check your teeth. But there's certainly nothing worse than um, walking around with food in your teeth or something of that sort. Um, and it, I know it's just kind of silly and it sounds very logical, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, it could very well happen to you. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, after the expo, uh, there's certainly a couple things to make sure you follow up on. Um, and everyone talks about follow up and, and how important it is. Um, and everyone's like, oh, of course, you know, follow up. And it is amazing how many people do not follow up at all. Um, so uh, with that said, I wanted to show a couple of, um, of emails that we recently got uh, after a Business Expo that we attended. Um, so here's here's a letter, um, dear Melissa. My name is so and so. Uh, I left it out because I don't want to get sued, just in case. Uh, and it was nice to briefly meet you at my booth during the expo. I know you're very busy. I'll get straight to the point. Yada yada. You can see the rest of the letter. Very very nice. For whatever reason, I decided to copy and paste the actual. Uh, email at the bottom of this so you knew that it was it was real. Uh, so there there is something wrong with with this letter, um, and it happens right in the first paragraph. Dear Melissa, my name is so and so. It was nice to briefly meet you at my booth during the expo. Uh, so the problem with this follow up email is that, um, ladies and gentlemen, Melissa never attended the mixer actually or the expo. I attended the expo. I passed out Melissa's card. She was an ex-employee. I had the business cards. I thought, why throw them away? I could just drop them in people's 
little bases, right? Um, so she never attended the event. My point being is that um, it's, it's good to make sure that if you do say it was nice to meet you at my booth, you actually did in fact meet them because I know that this guy did not meet Melissa. He now has lost some credibility in my book. Um, and um, and it, it certainly doesn't do anyone any good at this point. So um, if it, you know, he could have just added her email to some kind of e-blast at this point. Uh, and just sent it out. Um, so in any case, uh, if you're unsure if you met someone or didn't meet someone, you just maybe keep it a little bit more um, generic. But you know, certainly have a pen in your hand while you're at your booth and maybe make notes of the people you actually did meet so you can maybe make it a little more personalized. And sure, you might be going home with you know, 200 business cards. You might be thinking, I'm not gonna send out 200 individual emails. And in my opinion, you should be sending out 200 indiv individual emails because one of those 200 people could end up making you a lot of money. Um, our next example is um, someone that actually didn't even say dear whoever, but they just said it was a pleasure meeting you at the expo last week. My coworker and I had so much fun. We're super excited to coming on board in the neighborhood, et cetera. Uh, if you'd like a trial pass, uh, you know, so you get the point here what's going on. Uh, the bottom line and the problem with this uh, follow-up email is that there was actually no personalization at all um, and it was just all in very general terms. At, you know, they didn't even have to write an email. They could have just added us to their e-blast and sent out some information on their business. So, um, you know, once again, it, it, it's really funny. Um, we, we sometimes get calls after our event of attendees asking, oh, can I get a list of all the attendees with all their email addresses, because um, you know we want to, you know, email everyone. I'm like, well, didn't you walk around and collect cards? Well, yeah, we sure did, but that would take a lot of time to enter all that information. And I'm like, yeah, hello, you know, um, that that's what the job is. Uh, I'm not even making up that story. That is actually a true story. That <laughs> a true phone call that came in, uh, and I hung up, and we all laughed about it. Um, so I appreciate the guy for the comic relief during our day, but uh, unfortunately you know, people do like the easy way out and uh, if it was easy, everyone would be making a million dollars and, um, and, and successful. So um, in any case, be very, very cognizant of, um, of how you do um, the follow-up. Um, certainly post-promote um, your participation at the expo. Um, once again, not only will the, uh, the organization um, appreciate you and um, probably um, give you more hugs and kisses the next time they see you. Um, I personally have received those hugs and kisses, uh, so I'm just saying it, it's a positive thing. So one of, one of the things you could do is you could uh, post something like a blog on your website. Um, uh, here's uh, one of our past exhibitors that uh, did, took some pictures, which is great, so they brought a camera um, and um, and then posted it and did a, did a little something. Uh, so that was great. And then the, uh, since I, as the recipient of some of those hugs and kisses after, um, that I received from, from Greta, incidentally, um, we did post something after our participation at Preview um, and we even um, thanked Jackie as well. And I believe I received some, some hugs from Jackie the next time I saw her. So that was fun. So at the minimum, if you, even if you don't want the hugs and kisses, at least post promote your uh, your, your your participation. Uh, and the reason is that you know once again it just it it lets you know your business community, uh, the people that are in your circles, know that you're out there and um, and promoting your business to try to build it, and in turn um, helping out your clients as well. So um, our our final public service announcement, uh, once again, not necessarily having much to do with uh, participation uh, at a trade show, but definitely some etiquette. Um, so this email that I received, uh, I don't know if, if, if you can see, um, but yes, in fact, um, someone emailed us uh, and in the two uh, of the email, they did put 317 other people in the email. Um, clearly, they did not know the difference between two CC 
and BCC uh, for those people that might be um, under the age of oh, 26 that might be uh, following along with us. Uh, CC stands for carbon copy um, and BCC is blind carbon copy. Uh, which is a throwback to the typewriter days when there was carbon copy paper. But in any case, um, please don't include your whole database in an, in an e-blast because um, not only now does someone have your whole database and they can use that for um, um, unscrupulous um, purposes, but um, I'm sure everybody else um, in that little list of emails won't be very, very happy with you. So um, there are certainly a lot of uh, opportunities to use third-party um, e-blast providers. There's Benchmark, MailChimp, Vertical Response, um, and of course there's Constant Contact uh, that I, I throw out. They're not necessarily my favorite, but they're one that I throw in because Constant Contact is kind of like the um, Kleenex of the tissue world. Everyone knows what Constant Contact is. So that's what I mean by third-party um, e-blast providers. Um, finally, uh, book early and stay in touch with the promoters of the event. So um, seriously, uh, and I'm not necessarily just saying this because I'm in the offices of the Las Vegas Metro Chamber and I'm expecting the hugs and kisses on the way out. but. They do give you an opportunity at the show this year to sign up for next year's event. And, um, and not only, I think, because they give maybe a little discount, uh, but the reason why you want to do that is that I have a feeling that they do remember the people that sign up early. Um, and A, they're able to maybe refer you to other businesses, um, maybe refer your services, maybe you're a printer or promo items. Um, and if someone calls and asks for those services, they're going to remember, oh, yeah, uh, XYZ company signed up early, so I'm going to like thank them by giving them a nice referral. But um, but it's just always good to, to be prepared and um, not necessarily wait until um, the last week of the show. Um, unfortunately, uh, with our event, uh, the last three weeks of the event, about a third of the people that buy booths purchase it in that in that time frame. And what they miss out on is a lot of pre-promotion that we do. Uh, specifically mentioning their companies. So um, you're paying the same amount of money, so you might as well just prepare for it and, um, and plan with it. Um, so with that said, that is, that is that. And now we all are trade show experts, or at least we had a lot of fun listening. <laughs> um, I just want to open it up to any questions that you might have. Uh, you can type the questions into the chat box in the bottom left corner of the screen, or uh, if you're just on your phone, you can press star seven to unmute your line. Uh, just, I just want to know the, the worst of the worst. What is the, if you, if these small businesses can take one thing of what not to do from this presentation, what would that be? You mean aside from walking around with a piece of rice on your chin? <laughs> What's the absolute worst thing that you can um, do during I mean, the show? really, you spent hundreds of dollars at, at, at to, to exhibit, um, and to not prepare um, is uh, is, a, is, a, is a waste of money. Um, and to show up and just to have, you know, um, I know you're looking for a specific example, but I mean, if you just if you show up at the last minute uh, to set up your booth, or or you've been so you know busy uh, that morning, and then you you know even though setup is at 12 noon, and you or I'm sorry, the show starts at 12 noon, and you, and you set up at 11:59, or or you're late. Um, I mean, this is like the most important thing that you should um, schedule for your day, um, and you know show up early and relax and set up. Um, there should be no uh, personal emergencies that day in your life uh, because you can walk away with um, literally a client that can change your business. So why not take it very seriously? Awesome. Uh, do you have any questions at all? Or, um, uh, and I, I don't know if anyone has it, but I want to know um, if you, if you have signed up for Expo, if anyone who's listening in on the call is going to be coming to Business Expo, um, 
just send us a message. Uh, and if you have any questions at all about um, Business Expo or, you know, the Las Vegas is large next year coming up September 20th, just um, just let us know. We're all here to help you and make it an easy easy day for you. So um, I want to thank you so much, Dave, for, for hosting this webinar today. And um, we're officially on summer break. That's it. That's that for Chamber University. Thank you for joining us for the last session, last class of the semester, um, but make sure you check out Chamber Live, uh, it's like our summer school at Business Expo, June 15th, Cashman Center, and, uh, and have a wonderful summer, everyone.